there are some nights where instead of doing what I should be doing, sleeping, I'm on Facebook Marketplace aimlessly looking at things that I don't need. And for some reason, Facebook shows me a lot of engines and I just can't figure out why. Of course, I look at almost all of them because you never know what's going to be on there and it came through. I'm so happy that uh, the stars aligned and I have an engine that I would otherwise never get. My normal sources don't get these things in. This is a 3 liter Duramax, the LM2 out of a 2021 Silverado, or I think it's out of a 20 Silverado 1500. This is 277 horsepower, 460 foot pounds of torque, and I think they made this up until the 23 model year in pretty much all of the half ton full size GM offerings, Yukon, Sierras, Escalades, the trucks and the SUVs were able to be bought with this engine. It's got 146,000 miles, a story and details. I know you guys love that stuff. This engine was replaced because it had no power. It wouldn't rev and the oil looked terrible. And I think it was um, a very expensive engine to buy if I were to guess. Also, you may notice that this engine is not on my stand. No, I'm not taking a stand against stands. I can't mount this to the stand traditionally because this is the front of the engine. The timing chain is on this side. So I need access to all this stuff to take it apart, which means that I'm going to have to start at the front, back, the front of the engine and take some things off of here so I can mount it to the engine stand. So I think that's where we're going to start because there's no spark plugs. There's no spark plugs. It's a diesel. They don't do that. And uh, I guess I could see if it turns over. Yeah, I think that should be the next thing we do. Um, I'm sure it does turn over, judging by the story that I was told. But let's find out anyway. Maybe it's tough to turn over. You never know. All right, so now this is the front of the engine. As you can see, this is block casting here. We don't have a whole lot here, just the crank pulley, which is not sitting on the wood. And then there's a plate and your water pump. That's pretty much all I'm going to remove before I put this on the stand. Uh-oh, that didn't sound good. You guys hear that, right? Is there anything loose on the back here? I'm not convinced that's a rod. Oh, that bolt is loose now. Yeah, I think that's something in the timing system. Maybe. So this is what the bell housing side looks like. And there's not a whole lot taken apart, but there is quite a bit of slack on this, and I think that's what we are hearing. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I think that's what we were hearing. I don't think that was uh, something in the rotating assembly. All right, first thing we're gonna do is get the crank pulley off. Well, that was pretty easy. Next, we're gonna remove this uh, front cover. It's got a seal on it, it looks like. Throw the wood crates in the way. We need to do something about that. Got to be careful I don't want to hit the engine. Like a glove. This should just come right off, I think. It was making unhappy noises. There's not really anything to see here. I don't really know. I guess the crank pulley seals this and seals that. This has just a little bitty seal. Now it's time to remove the water pump. I know it's, it's so early. Well, that was a lot longer than I expected. Nope, don't say that. Oh, we're, we're leaking. It's an interesting looking pump. Plastic impeller, spins good. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with this. Now it's time to take a break because I've been at this for a solid six minutes and we're going to get the engine hoisted up and mounted to my engine stand. It'll take a little bit. It's fine. That's not straight. Well, folks, this was one of the most challenging engines to get on this stand. Just because of the bolt location, I had to mount it with the head of my stand sideways. But it's on there. For a second, I thought I could only use three bolts, but I was able to get all four in. It's just bizarre. It's backwards. 
Well, now I'm going to rotate this just to make it a little easier to work on the top of the engine. Hopefully it doesn't leak too much. Or not at all. There, that's perfect. Let me lock it in, in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on this injector harness. If I can figure out how these clips work. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, this won't be that bad. Injection harness is off. Now I think I can remove this top part. I think that's a fuel return. It's got these little metal clips. Unless they go in and you pull them off. I, I don't know. All right, so the metal clip is off, but I feel like we're no further than we were. I certainly don't want to break anything. Okay, let's see if we can get them out without doing that. I'm going to crack these lines loose next. I figured this out. So what you have to do is you put a little upward force on this once that metal clip is removed, and then you press these white tabs one at a time. I'm going to try to do this on camera. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'll try to do this so you can see how to do this because I couldn't find any information quickly on the internet. Get this metal clip out. Metal clip has been removed. And then we'll put a little bit of upward force on this. You can hear that pop. And it's off. So it's a little tedious, and I'm sure it's really fun in the truck. Really a blast. Like you, you techs can't wait to do this. Or there's maybe a special tool that makes this much easier. I don't know. All right, see if we can do this any quicker or better. That one just popped off there. Did it break? It sure did. Well, that's unfortunate. I don't think this piece is extremely expensive, but you definitely don't want to put any extra force on here than feel if you're if you feel like you're going to break it, it's going to break. I'm pretty sure there is a probably a tool that does this. That one came off all right. If you lift those white tabs up. I think that's that's the the key. Okay, well now that that's off of all the injectors and that broken piece will be easy to fish out with a pick later, it's time to see if we can get these injectors out. All right, first we're gonna unbolt these. All right, now I'm going to take an open end wrench. We got a 14. We're gonna see if we can rotate these. Oh yeah. I don't know if that's gonna help me or not. Oh yeah. This ain't this is not so bad after all. You just pull up on it while you're wiggling it. And they come out except for this one. I'll we'll have to figure that out, but we're gonna get out what we can and then we'll focus on the one that's stuck or whatever's stuck. Well, that was all really easy, but we still have one that's being a pain. We're going to get it. It's just going to hopefully. Ah, yeah. Let's get, uh, let's get blue on the job. I think blue can help us out here. I want to be very careful here. I don't want to do any damage to anything unnecessarily. Also don't want to launch this injector across the shop. Look at that. I think that's one of the easiest sets of injectors out of a diesel we've ever taken out on this channel. The injectors all look pretty decent. 
I don't see any real damage. I don't see any issues at all. Physically, good. Next, we'll remove some of this bracketry. All right, now we can kind of peel some of this off of here, I think. Well, this line is ready to come out of here, I think. There's one. And we have this clip right here. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. Let me get that one loose next. I think it all bought 10 bucks worth of diesel in it. Now the fuel rail. And I guess this bracket can come with. Well, that cleaned it up a lot. Next, it's time to remove the valve cover. Some of these bolts are already loose. But that is trapped by this piece. And the bolts don't come out. Why would they, why would they do this? All right, I guess it'll all come off at one piece. Okay, and it just occurred to me that I just went back to front. And we're gonna give it a little help with, with the aid of blue. I don't think I missed anything. This is one pesky valve cover. Ah, yes. Look how simple this is. I mean, it's, it is actually simple. It just looks like it's not simple, but I don't see anything crazy in here. Everything looks really clean. I don't see any damage to the cam lobes. I don't see any rockers out of place. These were the seals that made that valve cover so difficult to remove. Now, before we go cracking all these crack caps loose, I think what I'd like to do is remove the stuff on the front of the engine. We've got a plate here at the head, and then we'll get the flex plate out of the way and then the timing cover so we can look at the entire timing system because something's going on here. This doesn't look right to me. Now it could be that there's a component missing is I think there's a component missing or maybe it needs oil pressure for the tension to be gone from the chain. I wish I had a new gear to compare wear from the, from the chain. All right, let's get this apart. That is very loud. This is the loudest flex plate I've ever encountered. I think I'm gonna do the upper cover first. Let's see, this comes off pretty easily. I have my doubts. And there's the upper cover. Looks pretty good. No, I'm not throwing it across the shop. Not yet. Yeah, see, I think this one needs oil pressure here. I can hear, I can hear that. So I got the upper cover off. This moves pretty freely. And that tensioner there might be oil pressure fed. We won't know until we remove that. But the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this lower cover. This just has a couple of eight millimeter bolts. All right, now it's time to pry this off. They leave you places to pry, and look at the size of that rear main seal. All right, let's see, is there some place on the other side? Right here.
Oh boy. Well, I knew that was coming. Now let's talk about the most controversial part of this engine, and that would be the oil pump belt. Yes, I said belt, it's not a chain. It's a rubber and Kevlar belt that drives the oil pump submerged in oil at the back of the engine. This is the part where the transmission bolts to. It has a timing cover here. So to service this belt or to even inspect it, you must first remove the transmission, then the timing cover, and then you can replace this belt or at least look at this belt. Now, I, I have no idea if these belts last or if they don't last or if this is a common failure mode of these engines. I can tell you this belt appears to be in one piece. I don't see any missing teeth. So that is really nice to see but I don't like this at all. This to me is the cheapest way out, not the best way out. And well, I guess that's modern cars for you. Now, overall looking at the timing system of this engine, I don't see, I don't see any damage. I don't see any wear. I don't see any major problems. There's not chunks of plastic anywhere. All the guides look like they're in good shape. The chains look good. I don't see any cause for concern except one teeny tiny little thing. So here is that belt. As you can see, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it doesn't look bad at all. But if you look at this crank position sensor, there's some large sections of metal that are not supposed to be there. Now these are magnetic, so they inherently pick up some metal, but there's some pretty good sized slivers in there. And that's a little concerning. A little silver dust isn't that big of a deal, but large chunks, that's pretty bad. Also, if you look here, it looks like there's a little bit of uh, forbidden glitter slash sludgy oil here tucked in the corner of the pan. It's not great, but the rest of the timing system is pretty decent. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the oil pump belt with the special tools that I was born with. My hands. So let's take a close look at this belt. It's only when I flex it at very extreme angles can I see any type of uh, cracks. It's, it doesn't look like it's coming apart, which is surprising. But then if you go on this side, it actually looks pretty good on this side too. I don't like to say that, but it is in good shape. Next, I'm going to start removing some of the various 10 millimeter bolts that hold the timing components in. We'll start with this tensioner. That slid right out. That guide appears to be in excellent condition. Now, I'm not sure if this is under a lot of force now. That's an oil pressure fed. It's got a little bit of sparklies on it. That's not a good sign, but it looks okay. That guide has some silvery forbidden glitter on it, but not a lot of wear. Looks decent. And then I got to take this out next. But first, let's see if we can pull this off. Look at that. I haven't even taken the tensioner out of this side yet. I should probably do that. Lock tight. Okay, there's another guide. Looks great. And the first chain is out. It looks pretty good. Real good. Now let's see, will this come out? All of these have this little bit of faint metallic sparkles on them, but it's not detrimental to the uh, part itself. It all looks pretty good. This is going to be a little more challenging. I'm going to have to take that loose to get the uh, injection pump out. We'll deal with that a little bit later. Let's get some of these brackets off of this thing. Just make it easier to work on. Now it is time to cram the cam caps loose. If 
before I zip these off, I wanted to show you in the pockets of these cam caps, we've got some forbidden glitter. It's a little harder to see because it's in aluminum, but there's definitely some metal contaminated oil there. Now we can zip these out. Well, all of these journals have a little bit of wear. And then where the journals aren't, someone put anti-seize. I think the engine made its own anti-seize. And hey, it's not locked up, so maybe it works. But really, it's not good to see. You can see the uh, rough texture of that journal is not good. All of the uh, rollers seem to be unaffected by whatever happened to this engine. It's supposed to have a much better finish than this. And perhaps the cam caps have the most wear. They are, I wouldn't call them destroyed. We've definitely seen much worse, but they do have some pretty significant wear. That one's pretty rough. They get worse towards the back. Yeah, those are pretty bad. And the cams seem to have fared the best. There's not a ton of wear on these cams, and they're not cast cams either. It's look like they're uh, pressed together. A little bit of wear there. It's probably the worst of it. I think they would probably polish out pretty well. But I don't know if there's any value for used cams from one of these Duramax engines. Now one thing I do like about this engine is this. This is like a cam plate. It doesn't seal to the outside, so there's no chance of an extra component leaking oil. But if you tear up cams and cam caps, or this piece here, you can replace that without replacing the entire cylinder head. So that I do like. Let's crack these loose. Does this just lift up? Nope, I need blue. It came off easy enough. With that plate off, we can now see the head bolts and a much better look at the rocker arms. One thing I did notice about the rockers, the needle bearings in these things are very substantial. While the contact patch is pretty narrow, there still is plenty of material here I wouldn't suspect these would be a problematic part of these engines. Next, I have three 10 millimeter bolts. Now it is time to crack these head bolts loose. I have no idea how tight these are gonna be, which is why I've got the brakes on my stand. And we're gonna find out right now. Oh, wow. Okay, these are gonna be really tight. Oh, wow, that's really tight. That's a shoulder breaker right there. This is my big bar too, it's three quarter inch bar. The brakes are on on the stand. I'm gonna have to turn this on its side to get a little bit of leverage. Okay, let's see if this works any better. Wow. This is almost as tight as those Mercedes head bolts. I broke one of those. And the rest of these going to be like that? <laughs> really have to put my body weight on this. Some of the loudest head bolts we've had in a long time. These might be as tight as those Mercedes head bolts.
Okay, let's uh, check these with my short bar here. Make sure I got them all loose. I think these are gonna be really tight still. <laughs> We're gonna use the big bar to check this. I know I'm going out of order here. I'm just checking here. Okay, I'm gonna write this thing and we'll zip these bolts out. Let's get a look at these things. Look at them big bolts. Thought I was gonna say something different, didn't you? Yeah, I don't think I was gonna break one of these. You can hear the head gasket popping. So now the head, uh, in theory, just lifts right off. Here goes something. Uh-oh. That's not good. That looks, there's no way it's that bad, really? Oh yeah, that's bad. Let's pull this head gasket off. Which seems like a simple task. So you might say to yourself, wow, I've never seen diesel pistons with valve reliefs. That's because they're not supposed to be there. These pistons hit valves so hard, it literally smashed the top of the piston in every cylinder. Remember when I was checking the timing and I was like, man, that, that looks a little loose. This doesn't look right to me. Yeah, that was for a reason. And if you look closely, you'll see that even some of the intake valves left little bitty marks on these pistons. That part's a little harder to see, but the, the sheer depth of the impact marks is just so impressive. You can see it left a little lip on the outside once this thing focuses. Come on, camera. There's a little raised edge there. I mean, that's deep. That's almost a millimeter deep. Impressive. Here's another look at them with some light. Man, oh man. Cylinder walls don't look great either. They're not super chewed up, but I bet once we get these out, we will certainly see some damage from the reshaping of these pistons. And that is just amazing. So yeah, they're not supposed to be like that. Now the head, you would expect to have bent valves, but the thing about that is these valves open perfectly straight up and down. So there's no real force at any odd angle since the center of the valve, which is where the stem is, is on the top of the piston centered. Now, obviously, you can tell that the, the valve struck the pistons, and I wouldn't really trust these valves. I would say it's going to need some head work, but they're not going to be all mangled or bent in odd directions because these heads are flat. Another thing that I noticed is that none of the pistons are all the way at the top of the bore. Now that could just be the position of the crankshaft, which is why we're going to turn the crank over. It's going to make some bad noises because it just will. Yeah, I, I don't know that it, that would be strong enough to bend any rods or compress any rods. That didn't sound good. You hear that? Something's loose. Now it's time for the most precise scientific test on this channel. That's not good. That one's fine. That doesn't sound good. So if I can... I think we're going to find some damage on the rod bearing on this cylinder. So if we go down, we push this down, so the, the rod will pull 
down and the gap where the bearing would be, I could just push that down with the hammer. So that's not good. Now it's time to remove the injection pump. Lock tight. Now will this just slide off? No. That, this might be a little bit of a task here. Well, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, that was easy. Now we can unbolt the pump. The pump is out. So here is the injection pump. And this is loose because the guy I bought this engine from said that uh, this came off of the new pump, which was on the engine, and it would not run with this piece installed, but when he swapped the original part off of the original pump, the truck started. So I don't know why that was. I'm sure somebody knows, and if you do, please put that in the comments. Before I roll this thing over, we're going to see if the crankcase is drained. I believe it is. I want to believe it is. I should say that. Yes. That doesn't mean this won't make a mess. It just may make less of one. Well, not a lot of fluid in that. That was nice. Next, it's time to remove the lower oil pan. Hopefully this comes off pretty easy. Give you a nice place to pry. It's on there. It's glued very well. Not very, not enough places to pry. There we go, making some headway. Ooh, yuck. Wow, did not expect to find that. Well, the inside of the pan is, uh, disgusting uh, why am I touching this this is like I mean look at this what is this it's metal why do we keep touching you okay I'm gonna stop I just touched it with one finger I is that better I think it's better yeah that's much better no that was a mistake. This is the most amount of paste that we've seen in a very long time. And let's go look at what the uh, inside of the upper pan looks like. Mm-hmm. Yep, you guessed it. More of it. There's chunks of it on that, uh, I guess that's a variable pressure oil pump. Mm. I would bet we're gonna find some missing rod bearings. But the screen looks good. So it wasn't starved because the screen was blocked. Okay, now it's time to tackle the oil pump. Ooh, that's kind of fun. That comes right off. I don't know if I need to take that off actually because I think this separates right here. All right, now we can remove this oil pump, I think. There is a connector on here. Let's see if we can get that loose. I can't even see what to pry on. You know what? We're gonna give this a little bath. Oh, that chunky metal. I'm afraid I still don't know what I'm doing. Oh wait, I see it. Hold up, it's probably got a bunch of metal jammed in here. So, this has a little bitty shaft on a bearing. Oh, that looks like a, a problem in the future. Oh, I broke it. And it still doesn't come off. There we go. Oil pump removed. Let's see, can we get this filter off quickly? We'll cut this open and look at it later. Ooh, that is filled with anti-seize. So this is what drives the oil pump. That gear 
spins this, which has a cog, which lines up with the oil pump. I don't know why that was the best way to do that, but that's what they did. And this is why I don't like that. Look at the wear there. When this metal wears away, it develops slack between the oil pump drive, that shaft, and this part of the oil pump. And eventually, it will lead to failure. Now it is time to take the oil pump apart. Start with the pickup. Nothing in it. Oh, this thing's already coming apart. I don't want, oh, maybe if I take these out. Do I have to take this out? Let's try it. Yuck. And there's the oil pump. This is a variable pressure pump. I don't really see a ton of wear in here. There's some. It's not awful. Oh, what have I done? This is never going back together. This will also develop some play, and it does have some play right there. I really don't like to see that. So you can see there's a little bit of wear on the housing and a, a decent amount of wear on those veins. But I bet it still could build pressure. I don't see anything terribly detrimental. But the fact that the pickup didn't have any debris in it tells me that the fluid level may have been below the pickup, which is as we know, bad. Now it is time to work on the upper oil pan. It looks like a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts and some, I guess those are eight millimeter Allen or hex head bolts. Now I don't want to round these off, so I'm going to crack these loose by hand. Oh, that one got a little odd. I'll work on that in a second. There's some debris in that one. That is why. Need a little bitty tap. Man, I wish I could just get all the bolts out at once. Okay, those are out. Oh, we're leaking. And? We are off. So I pulled those bolts out with the magnet and look at that stuff. I think that's uh, from other parts of the engine. The inside of the crankcase looks pretty good, but look at the color of the rod caps. See that color, that, that, and that, and that, and that is different because this is bad. Well, I bet it's bad. Let's get blue to show you that it's bad. I don't know if you saw that. Let's watch it again. They're not supposed to do that. We're going to find some damage to the crankshaft. I promise. So at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbolt all of the rod caps. I'm going to leave the rods and pistons in their cylinders and then I will take the main caps off so I can pull the crank and then I'll flip it over and knock the rods and pistons out. Time to crack these loose. You know what we're going to try to turn this crankshaft over a little bit to make this just a little bit easier. All right now everything is much better to access much easier I should say. Oh, you can see how loose that one is. Oh, mm-hmm. All right, now we're gonna crack these main cap bolts loose.
Now the crankshaft should come right out. All right, let's try to knock these out. I don't know what it's gonna take. Just a few taps. Well, let's start with the rod bearings. That top shell is pretty worn. Not a lot of damage, just a lot of wear, especially for only 140,000 miles. I would expect better than that. The real surprise is this one, because uh, that's the anti-seize we found inside this engine. And the rods and pistons, Every single one has brand new valve release. They're not supposed to be there. You can see there's high points from the smashed aluminum. Kind of bums me out I can't sell these. Wait, no, I can sell these. If you guys want these for your desk, I think these would be awesome desk ornaments. I'll run them through the parts washer so everything will be clean. I don't see a lot of other damage on these cylinders, just pretty bad damage from valve impact each one of these is stamped it's not supposed to do that but then as you get towards the rear of the engine and yeah, that one's really deep this piston is wrecked this is the one from the rod bearing that disappeared. And look at the pretty blue colors. The amount of heat it takes to do that to this much cast is, is wild. That's a lot of heat to turn blue. A lot of friction. And starting at the front of the engine, yes, the front of the engine, the main bearings don't look too bad. Not a ton of damage here. But the crankshaft, as you would expect, it looks good until it doesn't. So these journals aren't too bad. All this looks good. It's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. Oh my God, look at that. I'm just joking. It's, we've seen this before. Will you stop rolling? That is super rough textured. I bet it could be machined. You'd need different size bearings f for that journal. But you can definitely tell that, that that section of the crank got pretty hot. Everything else looks pretty good. I have no idea what the crank on this is worth. I would imagine with the uh, damage significantly less than if it was in good shape. I just sprayed these out with some brake clean and they are not pretty. I can't really feel too many scratches in these few cylinders on this side, but that is pretty gouged up. Those you can definitely feel on this side of the engine. This may still have some value. I just don't know what that's going to be, if it's worth the machine work that it needs to be right. I just can't get past how deep those are. The force it takes to compress that aluminum, it's impressive. You can see that there's a faint outline from the other valve on this side of the piston. It's not too bad. That's what I would expect from contact, not this. As promised, I have cut the filter apart. There is oil in here. Will this not come out? Come on. I think it's got some dents in it that's keeping it in there. I'm going to pour this out. I've been fighting with this filter. It was a fight to get it out of the filter because it was crushed. 
and then I can't get this metal piece off, which I really wanted to so I could fan this out. But we always have the chop saw. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to chop saw. You can take a look at all of this that has come out of the filter as I've been working on it. We know what we're going to find. On second thought, I don't think this metal is a good fit for the chop saw since we uh, use it for chop saw things, not filters. So I'm going to spread this apart and I'll show you kind of what it looks like as you can already surmise. So every single pleat is packed with forbidden glitter, silver sparkly stuff, nothing too big. It's pretty fine material. That one's loaded. As you can see, it's pretty much everywhere. This was a real treat to take apart. Typically, this is much later model than I would ever see in the shop. My sources don't get anything this late model. I've never even had the chance to look underneath the hood of one of these vehicles, let alone rip an engine apart and be able to throw parts across the shop. Okay, disclaimer, I only throw parts that you should never install used. That's just to clarify. But to be able to take this engine apart, figure out how it was assembled, see the failure mode, this was a very good opportunity. And I'm, I suppose I'm glad I couldn't sleep that night. As far as what happened to this engine, it was starved of oil. The biggest telling factor of this teardown was the fact that we didn't see any junk in the sump. I mean, we didn't see junk in the pickup. If the oil level was high enough that it would have surrounded that pickup, some of the floating debris would have been jammed into the pickup, but that wasn't the case. It was clean, which tells me the oil level was below that, which means it was starved of oil. The thing I can't figure out is how it was able to destroy a rod bearing and jump time. I don't necessarily think that those are related. I think the fact that it was run low on oil, the chain tensioner is oil pressure fed. Without oil pressure, I suppose it could jump time and that's what happened. And the amount of force to leave valve imprints in the pistons like that is incredible. If the valves were at any sort of angle, they would have been mangled, but the fact that they are straight up and down and that head is flat is probably what led to those pistons damage. It's really cool and I'm glad instead of having one really bad rod and piston to sell out of an engine and I get tons of requests for them, now I have six. So if you'd like one of these six rods and pistons for your desk or anything else out of this engine or anything off of this 96 LT4 six-speed Corvette, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our parts cars every single week. We've got all kinds of new stuff. I really hope you enjoyed this video as always. I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.